All right, everyone, David back here for part two of how to make mead. If you haven't seen the first part, you can check it out there. It doesn't look as good, probably won't sound as good, but I have a new camera for 2020, a new light for 2020, so hopefully things in this video will look a lot better. That one didn't look bad, it's still watchable. I highly recommend checking it out because I made the video. Uh, but in part two, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be pulling our mead off of our lease. Our lees, our lees right here is this uh, sediment down here at the bottom. What that is, is essentially dead yeast. Now this is where you need to do a little bit of research because certain yeast you need to be able to, you can leave on the lease for a long time. The D47 that I'm using here, actually the longer you let it sit, the more complex the flavors. But there are certain types of yeast that you wanna get off the lees pretty quickly. Um, with that being said, we're gonna be pulling it off the lees. We're gonna be adding our flavors, which is strawberry, and we're gonna be putting it in the second container. Um, so strawberry, this is going to be a good summer mead. Uh, that's why I want the strawberries, but I used frozen strawberries. And the reason I'm using frozen is because fresh in the supermarket isn't quite as fresh as you might think. It's been sitting in warehouse and on transportation and it can pick up bacteria as well as wild yeast that might actually start some weird things in your secondary fermentation where frozen tends to get thrown right into the freezer. And so the chances of bacteria and wild yeast getting picked up on it, not so high. Now I do have to do a little bit of preparation with this and I'm gonna show you guys that. Uh, and then I'll show you how to use this guy right here, the racking wand to pull off the mead from the lees and put it in the second container. Everything used in this video, except for maybe the fruit is gonna be linked below. So check that out. They are affiliate links. They do help the channel and it's greatly appreciated if you use those. So let me bring the camera a little closer. We're gonna be going to the stove over here and uh, let's hop to that. All right, so what I've done, I put a pound of strawberries in a pan here, not pan, a pot here. I've got a potato masher and I have the oven on medium to kind of thaw it out. And as it thaws it out, I'm just gonna be mashing it, pretty much home pureeing it without a food processor. Uh, you can use a food processor if you want. I don't have one or a blender, but I do want to warm it up. I don't want to be throwing in frozen berries. I want to warm it up to thaw it out to get all the juices flowing from it, uh, to get all that flavor and just mashing it up. It doesn't have to be complete liquid by the time you're done. You can still have the chunks in there. It's not a big deal. Uh, you're just going to be thawing it out, mashing it up, and then adding it to your uh, mead. Now, you don't want to add hot... Um, strawberry goo to your mead. So once you're done with this, you're just gonna set it aside and kind of let it get down to room temperature again. And then you're gonna, we'll come back and um, kind of take a look at what we have. Uh, mine is still got a ways to throw out. Not gonna have you guys sit here and watch me mash up a bunch of strawberries. I'll show you the before and after, uh, obviously before, and I'll show you after here in a second. All right, so we now have it this nice and mashed up. Everything's thawed out. There you go, some nice yummy strawberry goo. Uh, another thing I do like, I said earlier, you can throw it in a food processor if you wanted to. You can if you want to, but I do like to warm it up because if there is a chance that there's some bacteria from it on it or uh, wild yeast from when it was out in the field, then the cooking it and warming it up is going to kill that off. Now, like I said, you don't want to add hot anything to the mead. You want room temperature. So I'm just going to sit that to the side. I'm going to very lightly cover it with a paper towel just to, I don't want to cover it with anything airtight because that'll take longer to cool down. I'm just going to sit that aside, let that cool down, and then we'll come back to the rest of this video. All right, so. We are now at room temperature with our strawberries. Uh, when you're heating this up, you don't need to get it boiling or super hot. It doesn't even really need to get steamy. You just need to thaw them out and, and just mash them with the, uh, the masher. Uh, so it doesn't take long to get down to room temperature. Um, so you notice I have a different container. It's a wide mouth container. It makes it a lot easier to get the strawberries down in there. Uh, but before we put the strawberries in the container, we're going to go ahead and siphon off the mead into this container, take it off of this lease. Now to do that, this container needs to be higher. Your, your firm, uh, primary fermentation needs to be higher than your secondary fermentation. 
So I have a little um, dinner table, one of those that folds out down here. And then I have a little stack of stuff here. Uh, eventually when I move into a house, which will hopefully be very soon, I'll set up an own, my own little mead making contraption. Uh, but I'm gonna set this up higher. It doesn't have to be super high. It just needs to be higher so that it gravity pulls it down once you get it started. And we're kind of gonna jump into that really, really quickly. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull the rubber stopper out. Put that aside, don't need that anymore. You can throw that in the sink to clean and sterilize later. Take a sniff of it. That smells good. I found a nice, um, if you saw the first video, I found a nice local honey for this. All right, so this is higher. And then I'm gonna put this down in here. Uh, one thing to note, there are cheaper uh, versions of this on Amazon. The one I have linked is this one and I'd highly recommend it. I'm not just saying that because it's more expensive. I'm saying that out of experience. The cheaper ones suck. They're a huge, huge, huge pain in the butt to clean, a huge pain in the butt to dry. It's just, I don't like them at all. This is really nice. I just grabbed out a little cup because I'm gonna go ahead and take a quick sip of this. So I'm gonna put the end down into the, the glass. And I'll actually kind of try to tilt this camera down. Give me one second to do that so you all can see what I'm doing down here. All right, there we go. I think you can see that a little bit better. Still trying to figure out this new camera. And then I'm going to put the siphon filter. You don't want to sit it in the lease. You want to sit it just above because you don't want it so sucking that up. So you're going to set it just above and you'll kind of adjust as it uh, continues to drain into here. Uh, and then at the end, you just pull it up and it stops draining because there's nothing for it to draw anymore. But I'm going to go ahead and put this down in here. I only want to take a little bit of a sip. And what you do is you just lift up the stopper, push it down, If it doesn't do it on the first try, just do it a few times and it'll start going. Here we go, or not. There we go. I just want a sip, I'm gonna take it out. That's way more than a sip. <laughs> I'll dump that in there. All right, let's see how this tastes. Now this is not gonna be the most delicious mead you've ever had. but it's still pretty good. Ooh, that's good. That's real good. I might actually just finish that off after the camera turned off. So let's go ahead and do that again down into the jug down here. Now you really want to pay attention. This comes with a clip so you can clip it on. I found that doesn't really work too well. I'm just going to hold it. And so gravity right now is just bringing it down and around. Uh, when you get this, this is the, the, rubber tube is wrapped up in some really tight coils you don't you kind of want to stretch that out it'll make it a lot easier and you don't want it coming down and just hanging down below uh, the carboy down here or the jar whatever you want to call it down here you want it sitting above it and gravity is going to do all the work and as you can tell it's doing it pretty quickly pulling that off when it gets down towards the bottom, I'll see where I'm at and adjust. It's okay if a little bit of lease comes through, you're still in secondary fermentation, it's still gonna be fermenting. It's not that big a deal. And like I said, once I add this, it's only gonna sit for about two weeks with the strawberries on it before I siphon it or rack it again. That's what it's, uh, you call it in the mead world, racking it. Uh, and then I'll rack it off again into another container to get the strawberries out. Um, if you want more of a strawberry flavor, you can add more than strawberries. I added a pound. If you want less, you can add less. Um, and then you can leave it sitting on as little or as long as you want. That's the glory of this. Um, personally, I like to leave my uh, flavorings, my fruit or whatever it is that I'm using to flavor it for only a couple weeks. I don't like it too strong. I like the flavor of just a traditional mead. And so what I'm doing here, I'm just slowly pulling, dropping the uh, 
the racking wand down a little bit, but not touching the bottom. And what you can do is kind of tilt it a little bit, not too much. You don't want to stir up that lees and get it sucked up. Like I said, you'll have a little bit left over in the bottom. That's a so you'll have a little bit left over in the bottom and that's perfectly okay. You know, I wish there was a way to be able to do it all, but you also want to leave some room at the top. In fact, that might be a little too much. I might have to pull some of that out. Now, this isn't like the primary fermentation where you need a ton of headroom, uh, where it just kind of comes bubbling out like crazy because it's not going to ferment like that. There's still fermentation happening. You're still creating alcohol in here, but you don't have to worry about this huge explosion. Uh, but this still is a little more headroom than I'd like. So I'll probably unfortunately have to dump some of that out, but let's go ahead and pull this out and then we'll dump the strawberries in. Uh, there's still some in the container or in the hose. So there we go. All right, let's drop this in the sink. Now, if you got too much in here like this, it's not that big a deal you can just drink it. It's still not the best. It hasn't mellowed completely, but it's still drinkable. That's pretty good. It's a little carbonated. The carbonation will kind of fizzle out. The car, um, there will be a degassing phase. We'll talk about that later. I'm not going to do degas now. I don't see the point in that yet, uh, but let's go ahead and get the strawberries in. This might not be too bad, but the reason that I use the jar is a wider mouth. It's a lot easier to get the fruit in there. You don't have to worry about using uh yeah, that's going to be way too much. So if you come into this situation, you're just going to do the exact opposite of what you just did. I'm going to bring this up here, put the siphon down in there and pull a little bit off back into this jug. This is the glorious thing about this is it's for the most part foolproof. I don't want to bring a lot out, just a little bit so that I can get the strawberries in there. There we go. That's about all I want to do right there. Don't want to have it pull all my strawberries out. Empty out your hose. Throw it back over here. Now, again, sanitation at this point is still key. Uh, I've completely sanitized my workspace. Everything's been wiped down, even things that aren't touching the mead. There we go. That looks a lot better without having to waste a ton. Now, what you can do is just give it a tiny little swirl. You don't really want to do too much. Uh, uh, you don't want to get a ton of oxygen down in here. I just want to get the strawberries all kind of blended in together. And actually what this is starting to do, if you all can see, there's some uh, bubbles coming up that's actually slightly degassing it. And that'll be explained in another video. Like I said, I'm not going to worry about that right now, but essentially what it's doing is releasing carbon dioxide. And I'm going to stop it there because I don't want too much released. And then just like in the first video, you're going to put your top on, you're going to set up your, your little bobble air thing here, bobble air thing, your airlock. And there you go. I'm going to set this for about two weeks. Let the uh, strawberry just kind of become uniform throughout. And then what we'll do is we'll rack it into another container and we really will degas it at that point. Uh, get all the gases out and then you're just going to sit aside let it age and then bottle it up and it'll be good to drink with that being said we're going to go ahead and finish this video like i said everything is linked below that you need to do this with uh, if you like this video give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel there will be a part three coming in you know probably a couple weeks and uh yeah i'll see you all in a future video